Hi everyone, this is our single that got to 24 last year. Um, we should point out our next single, we want it to get to number one, okay? And if you want to join us, please do, because it's a public worker song, it's amazing. We've just heard the raw run through on Friday, it's amazing guys, so please come on board. And this is yours, so join in if you know it. economic conditions necessary for our nurses to survive and thrive. <laughs> we want them to be happy and our speakers will be telling you how the government aims to sabotage that. to the breakup of the national health. We are here generally to protest government propaganda, lies 
and raise public consciousness by presenting the true picture. The government is purposefully deceiving people when they say we can't afford the national health. There was even a phone-in on BBC Radio 4, that pillar of the establishment which repeats everything the government tells them to say. And it was called Any Answers. And the host was asking each caller as they came in, specifically, how much caller, how much extra tax would you pay every month to save the NHS? As if they haven't got any more money in the kitty. As, as if they've got to only keep squeezing people or do, or wreck, you know, I mean, this is, this is not true. Anyway, one answer was, well, the NHS has saved my life four times. So I, I, would, I would have given everything. And the host of the, of the, of the phone-in, she said, no, I'm not asking you that. How much would you pay right now? Would you pay 50 pounds? I mean, this is propaganda that somehow it's up to us to keep on being squeezed. It's mad. <laughs> of course they can afford the NHS. Sorry, the NHS. The government have got their priorities wrong. They protect the rich and harm the poor with their rotten economic policy. write a speech, so who knows what I'm going to say, but um, hopefully nothing too controversial. We are outside the Department of Health. Um, we have obviously witnessed uh, eight months or more of quite astounding changes and um, things that have been happening with our profession. And it's not only us, it's clear that it's everybody, the nurses, the teachers, the police, the um, people with disabilities, people on tax credits, um, who else? The ambulance drivers, uh, anyone else? Students! Students! Patients, absolutely, and I think that that is key, because what we are seeing now is this sort of rhetoric that none of this is about patient safety. And I think as a doctor, I would like to stand by what I have always said, and I do absolutely believe this is about patient safety. Yes. There is no question that what is happening to our nurses and our doctors and the NHS is not going to impact upon everybody. We doctors remember this. Whilst they try and divide us all, we're also patients. We use the NHS. I use the NHS. So this will impact upon me as much as it will impact upon any of you who go and use the NHS. And I think that we really in this country will not realize what we have lost until it is gone. And it is going. So let us not forget that while Jeremy Hunt seems to think that the nurses needn't do a full course and it'll be fine to downskill nurses and actually it's all good for people from disadvantaged backgrounds. And I was in a meeting with him two weeks ago and heard him say that whilst lots of politicians challenged it. They actually challenged him. So there are brilliant politicians there fighting your cause. Don't forget that. There are also wonderful people from the media fighting our cause. However, as Vivian said, we have a very complicit media. And I think we have to be very mindful of what we listen to and take in and believe that is written in the papers, okay? So let us just, let me shut up and let us just really fight for our nurses. I think they're fantastic. If anything that Midstaffs did show, uh, and Jeremy Hunt will talk about Midstaffs because he says he's a patient, patient safety champion, but Midstaffs showed, you know, very, very clearly that without excellent nurses, people die. It's very clear. 
the nursing staff are the people that save lives. So please let us respect them. Thank you. Hello. Lovely doctor, thank you for inviting me. So I've been working in the NHS for eight years. Uh, for the last three, I've been training to be a cancer specialist. And you see some pretty tough things in the NHS. You see some very difficult things. But what I can categorically tell you from every single day of work that I have done, it is the nursing staff who work tirelessly, who continue to give absolutely everything behind the scenes that are the very soul and backbone of the NHS and the care we provide. And I think there's a lot to be proud of in British history with respect to nursing. In the 1850s, a lady called Florence Nightingale stood up and showed the world, a British lady, that making hospitals clean and also training nurses, dedicating time and effort into giving them the skills to look after others, helps patients live longer, helps patients get better quicker. In the 1960s, a nurse called Cicely Saunders set up the first hospice in the world, a place dedicated to giving integrity for caring for people in the most difficult times at the end of their lives. I work in the NHS, which is one of the most egalitarian, progressive and best healthcare systems in the world. We should all be proud of it. Healthcare is given based on need, not on the ability to pay, but this is being destroyed before our very eyes. And these are political choices, make no mistake, as many of people have highlighted already. These are not necessary decisions. When the government choose to invest in private finance initiatives, basically take out mortgages to build hospitals and schools which then have to close, it is the patients that suffer and the, it is the corporations that profit at the end of this. Make no mistake about that. By choosing to make nurses pay for their training, they are effectively stopping some of the most passionate, caring, hard-working people being able to enter the profession. Think about what that means. It is absolutely outrageous. I want to end on a positive note. I very much felt like we didn't have a voice. A year ago, if you'd asked me, what can we do? You know, you can feel very apathetic. But what I have seen people achieve in the last year has been absolutely phenomenal. I have watched Anthony, uh, Danielle, lots of very inspiring people create massive campaigns, speak in front of hundreds of thousands of people, and they have forced the government to discuss reinstatement of their bursary. That is a massive achievement. That is democracy. As a junior doctor and a BMA rep, if you had asked me a year ago if I could imagine junior doctors going out on picket lines, uh, you know, no, is the, the frank answer. But we have gone through five successful, safe, well-supported, well-organised strikes. And we have forced the government into concessions. Not nearly enough, I might add, not nearly enough. And the struggle will continue for that. I think the point is this. We need to start linking up. We need to start seeing that what is happening to the, to the nurses, what is happening to the doctors, what is happening to the teachers, what is happening to the police is exactly the same rhetoric. If we all stand together, and if we all make that message very clear, our voice will be so loud, they won't help, they won't be able to help but listen to it. And I would say, absolutely, on behalf of all the junior doctors, you have our full, full support. Well, that was great solidarity from our junior doctors. And I think we can fight this fight, but also use it to start that broader discussion about student fees. Because actually, education is a public good. And education, the cost of it should be met from general progressive taxation, far more progressive than what we've got now. And it should be free education. Now, of course, 
At the moment, one of our big political issues is the EU referendum. And I won't use this platform to exactly say how I tell you, tell you how I think you should vote. What I will say is vote, because it's really important to have your say in this. But I will take on one argument. An argument's being put that, oh, we know immigration is a problem for our NHS. And I want to take on, someone just said rubbish from the audience, well done, it's a rubbish argument. And let's be concrete about this, and I tried this argument on a white van man a couple of days ago and it worked really well. I said to him, think about it if you're in hospital as a patient waiting to be treated, where are you most likely to see a migrant to Britain, an immigrant? It's not in the queue with you, it's treating you as a health professional or as a helper. And we know that immigrants, particularly EU immigrants, are more likely to be younger and healthier, and it's their taxes that are helping to pay for your NHS. So let's say loudly and clearly, immigration is not a problem for the NHS. But there clearly are problems. The NHS is horribly stretched. Our nurses, doctors, midwives and others are working incredibly too hard because of two reasons. We spend 6.6% of GDP on NHS. France and Germany spend 11% of GDP on healthcare. They are not spending enough. We need to say rich individuals and particularly multinational companies paying their taxes and that can go into the NHS. And the other thing that's the cause of the problems in the NHS is privatisation. And we know there's a racing privatisation of our NHS. And I know that the public believed, as the Green Party do, in a publicly owned and publicly run NHS free at the point of use. Let's back that publicly owned, publicly run free NHS. And let's acknowledge that this is not what this government believes in. This is not what quite a lot of people who were campaigning to leave the EU who say they'd like to put more money into the NHS, it's not what their history shows they believe in. What we need to do is have this referendum and then I've got a saying, 2020 is too far away. For the sake of the NHS, for the sake of all of us, we need to get rid of this government long before then. Not just the nurses in our magnificent National Health Service, but I want to pay tribute to all workers within the National Health Service. Like many people here, I can tell stories of how the National Health Service saved my life and the life of many people in my family. And it was during that time, when I'm lying on that bed, that I saw the dedication of the nurses, of all of the staff within the National Health Service. But you know, what surprises me more than anything is how anybody can be surprised that the Tories would do any difference to what they're doing. How can you be surprised about that? Pope's a Catholic, fair shit in the woods, Tories cut the National Health Service, that's what they do. So the only question that we have to answer right now is what are we prepared to do about it? Thank you very much. I'm the loud one with the megaphone, so I don't know if I'm going to have any voice left. Clearly I do, it's fine. Um, thank you all for coming out, obviously. I'm a second year student nurse, so this is particularly close to my heart. I wouldn't be here without my bursary, as most of us wouldn't. So I'm going to start with a poem. All my stewards list, which are either or, <laughs> um, that I wrote. It's called Plea from a Student Nurse. Nurse, nurse, is the shout from the curtain. She doesn't know I'm a student, of that I am certain. I may not be at the forefront of clinical decision, but I happen to be there in her line of vision. My patient is 90, scared and alone. She keeps asking, nurse, nurse, when am I going home? I sit with her a while, trying to soothe her to sleep. It's 3am and I am dead on my feet. 
She doesn't understand why she is here. The dementia has made everything so unclear. She's had an accident, the bed's all wet. There, there, I say, please don't fret. Back into bed, all clean and dry, she smiles and whispers thank you with a tear in her eye. Only four hours left of this awfully long night. My mind can't stop thinking of the assignments I've still left to write. A new day on placement, there's so much to learn. Do this and that and that again. I have no time to earn. Do those obs, wash this patient. Don't think for a minute about becoming complacent because we are watching you, marking you, testing your skills. Never mind your own worries about paying your bills. Mr. Osborne, why can't you see? This isn't like every other degree. I hold the hands of the sick and dying, soon to comfort those left sobbing and crying. Who will be there in their hour of need or when there's not enough staff to help someone feed? I will. Who will be there in the early hours or to assist eight patients with their daily showers? I will. Who will be there to clean up the mess or simply make a tea for someone in distress? I will. Please, Mr. Osborne, why can't you see? For all the above, it will be me. I'm exhausted, stressed and emotionally broken, but day after day they have my devotion. For I am a student nurse and I care. I am a student nurse, I will always be there. I love what I do, day in and day out, which is why I'm here, which is why I will shout. Mr. Osborne, please listen to me. Our future students need that bursary. It's not just us nurses, but the others too. We are in this together, begging you. This is our chance, we must all unite. This is our future and this is our fight. With you all the way. I'm ashamed and I am embarrassed by the hoodwinking, the betrayal of an entire generation. I didn't have to pay to take a degree or to train as a teacher. I couldn't have done so. I was a single parent. How are you supposed to live in the cities where your hospitals and your universities are located? Is this government going to convert a few more shipping containers that can be parked in hospitals for you to live in with a food bank at the entrance where grateful patients put tins of soup. How are you supposed to live on nothing? They expect you to care for everybody else. They should be caring for you. They cannot get away with saying that students' supernumerary status absolves them of any duty of care towards you. They don't care if you starve to death on the bloody street. What about your own needs? Your own health care needs? Your own well-being? Nutrition? Warm bed? Safe housing? being able to afford even the fare to get to your shift. This is outrageous! <laughs> I'm humbled and in awe of your selfish dedication. Thank you.
Okay, let me start that again. I've <laughs> helped look after the families as well and help them on their journey after a massive change in their life. I've start, got up for work at half past five in the morning. I've done the 12 and a half hour shifts. I have worked really, really hard, as has Charlie, as has everybody else, and I wouldn't have done this without the bursary. It's an absolute disgrace that this government thinks that we should pay to work. And I genuinely believe the only way we're going to win this is by getting this government out of office this year. The Tories have got to go. a wider ideological attack on our NHS. They've attacked the cleaners and taken away money from them who already earn pittance for what they do. They've gone for the doctors. They're going to go for the...